Good morning. Welcome to this week six lesson number one or week six A. So again, as we progress um, towards working on, you know, quote unquote, final review, right? If you were taking a final, what would that look like? So as we progress towards that, understanding trig is a really good foundation of pre-cal, especially if for those of you taking calculus or stats next year. It's a really great foundation to have. So we're going to work towards the idea of solving and verifying trig, kind of the hardest step, but the most important part of this, the most important knowledge. So let's jump on in. You will need this formula chart for yourself, whether you Google them or you take a screenshot or you pull up the PDF or whatever, you're going to need this information. Let's jump in. We only got two questions to go through. Let's use our identities to simplify this problem. The cosine of pi over 2 minus x times cosecant of x. So we need our identities one more time. And I realize that we have a, a reciprocal identity right here with cosecant. I can write it as one over sine. And I also see that I have a co-function identity right here, cosine of pi over two minus theta is equal to sine theta. Sine theta. So cosine of pi over two minus x would be equal to sine of x. Um, Really what the cofunction identities are telling you is that if you shift by either a quadrant or a half or two quadrants, like a half of a circle or uh, three quarters, that's it's going to show you what that is. So those are really what those cofunction identities are. So basically, if you shift cosine by one quadrant, you actually have sine. Prove it to yourself using Desmos.com to graph, but we're going to move on. So again, I know that cosine of pi over 2 minus x is a co-function identity, so I know that it's just going to be sine of x. I also know that cosecant of x is a reciprocal identity, so it's just going to be 1 over sine of x. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply across, and I end up with just the number 1. Super easy, nice and simple to start with, but let's dive into something a little bit harder. So what if I had this? not as simple. I might say, hey, hold on, these are all reciprocals, but it doesn't quite help me. Then I might say, hey, hold the funk, aren't those my Pythagorean identities because I see sine minus one. Again, not quite because it's not squared. So what's the only other thing left to do and that's to deal with that subtraction. So very quickly, I'm gonna show you just the basic setup of how you would have dealt with that fraction because I know sometimes we still struggle with adding and subtracting fractions no, you can't just subtract across. It doesn't work that way because you need a least common denominator. So the simplest thing is to just take the denominator of the other side and bring it over as numerator denominator. So it's self over itself. Same thing with the other side. I bring those cosines over and ta-da. Now you end up with, this is it's just a repeater, so that means it's just gonna be squared. This is a repeater, so that means it's just going to be squared. And only on bottom are we dealing with that chaos. Because we don't quite know what we're looking at, it's smart not to fully simplify just yet. So I'm going to show you where we first started from here. So I got my identities up, and here is that very first bit of information we just talked about. So that's just the subtraction. I showed you the first step. This is the simplification. Now let's move on. Now, normally I have these kind of hidden, so they only appear at a time. But with verification, with identities, with solving, there's so many different ways that you can solve these that it's important to see all the steps and why I chose those steps, because that's, in essence, how you're going to figure it out. Remember, remember, peanut butter and jelly. I'm going to do it different than you might do it, than your friend might do it. And, that, and just because you start a solve doesn't mean it's fully incorrect. Even if you get to a point you can't finish, I would just say cross it out and try again. Don't erase because there might be some good work in there you need or there, you know, you might come back to it with a clear head later. You never know. So I would never tell you to erase. I would just say cross them out and try again. But anyway, so we've subtracted. We're here. Well, now I know that sine squared uh, minus one squared, or sorry, sine minus one squared can actually be further simplified. I cannot just bring those squares over. It doesn't work that way. So I have to do this, sine theta minus one times sine theta minus one, and I'm going to FOIL those out or distribute, whatever version you call that. So I end up with this, sine squared theta minus two sine theta plus one. I agree that this is equivalent to this, and that's it, cool. This just came over, I didn't do anything there, and the bottom just came over, I didn't do anything there. Great, so now we've dealt with this guy, let's move on one step further. Well, 
if you notice, sine squared theta minus two sine theta plus one minus cosine squared. Okay, we got a lot of squares. So hey, 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 Pythagorean identity alert. I can go lots of different ways with this. Everybody's got their own version of how they might see this. You might be like, hey, sine squared is uh, one minus cosine squared. Cool, you can convert that. Or you might already notice that one minus cosine squared is already there, and you know you can just convert that to sine squared. Just a brief reminder how to use the Pythagorean identities. If I start with sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, I just want to get these to match. So one minus cosine squared means I have to subtract this cosine. And now I see that this statement is equivalent to this sine squared, so I can bring it in as substitution. That's just a reminder how to use that Pythagorean. And so this now becomes this. Ta-da! I didn't mess with anything else. So we've dealt with this line, we've dealt with this line. Now we're looking at this to see where we can simplify. Well, if I have one sine squared and another sine squared, that ends up being two sine squared thetas. Cool. As you see, I still haven't dealt with that denominator and that's okay. We're just taking it one step at a time. Uh, and so now on top, I've got um, a repeated two sine that I can factor out, right? I see a two sine a two sign here and a two sign here. And because this is squared, one of those signs is gonna be left and look at what happened here. I factored out two sine theta and I was left with a single sign. And this one, I'm not left with the number zero because then that would have never been there to begin with. I'm left with the number one. So there's my factor on top. Again, I haven't dealt with the bottom. I've just dealt with the top. And now as you see, this sine theta minus one and this sine theta minus one are gonna disappear. You're just left with two sine of theta over cosine theta, and sine theta over cosine theta is tan. So I have simplified this fully chaotic original statement into just two tan theta. That's it. So this is hard enough to begin with, so we're just going to kind of end here, and the assignment you're going to jump into. The next video, we're going to focus on um, more verification, more simplification, and learning some of those sum and difference formulas, um, kind of beginning the foundations for solving, and then we're going to work on solve the hardest steps. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video.